Hey, it's Sheila Social Studies. Hey guys, welcome back to Sheila Social Studies. Today we're going to be covering installment three of the Roaring Twenties, The Economy. Nearing the end of World War I, the United States fell immediately into a recession or a general decline in economic activity caused by a widespread drop in spending, which lasted from the end of 1918 through the majority of 1919. This is partially because of the huge adjustments that were happening on American soil regarding the connection between the war and the economy. The United States government canceled billions of dollars worth of contracts with businesses that produced war supplies, and millions of soldiers left the military and took many of their jobs back, contributing to a large spike in unemployment of women, as well as the millions of Mexican and African Americans who travel north to take factory jobs that were abandoned at the start of the war. Prices on goods soared, and the salary of the factory laborer could not keep up with the rising prices, leading to strikes across the nation. Labor unions and millions of workers went on strike demanding more pay to be able to afford the new standard of living. Many Americans blamed Woodrow Wilson's Democratic Party for the hard times, not understanding how much the economy relied on the war effort. Harding ran for the presidency promising a return to peace and prosperity or a return to normalcy, thus securing the presidency. After the recession and throughout the 1920s, businesses in the American economy rebounded, achieving record highs and creating a lot of wealth. Between 1921 and 1929, manufacturing in the United States more than doubled and jobs and wages secured large increases. American salaries, or money that they would get paid for doing work, roughly doubled from $500 to $1,000 a year. These changes in the economy led to the Americans' ability to purchase new products. The way products were mass-produced via the assembly line led to a price drop on household goods that Americans purchased and changed the way they lived forever. This era in American history became known as the Roaring Twenties. So after President Harding died in office of a heart attack in August of 1923, his vice president Calvin Coolidge rose to the presidency. Coolidge was a more honest man than Harding and immediately fired all of the government officials that were involved in the corruption scandals that plagued the Harding administration. And these swift actions slowly restored the nation's faith in the government. President Coolidge quickly gained popularity for his work in office and won his own election in 1924. Coolidge believed that the power of big business and wanted the United States to be a wealthy nation and escape the progressive politics that he felt was holding the nation back, leading Coolidge to support a pro-business agenda when dealing with the economy. President Coolidge placed three major pro-business policies in effect that energized the economy. First, he raised tariffs, or taxes on foreign goods, which decreased foreign competition, helping domestic merchants. Secondly, he eliminated the ban on corporate mergers and trusts. Now businesses were able to gain considerable wealth like the days of the Gilded Age. And lastly, Coolidge lowered the taxes on the wealthy, which would lead to an economic theory called trickle-down economics. The theory of trickle-down economics would be that the government would cut the taxes on the wealthy, and these tax cuts would allow the wealthy business owners to create more jobs for the lower class to take, and in turn, purchase more goods. The money would trickle down to the Americans in the lower wealth class, and the scenario would look kind of like this. Number one, the wealthy received tax cuts. Number two, they expanded their business and created new jobs that Americans would take and purchase food or new products and goods. And number three, the farmers received the money or the stores received the money, leading to a business boom. 
Now, Coolidge's policies killed any progressive era government controls on businesses, and with the return of laissez-faire or hands-off capitalism, the stock market soared to new heights. Another byproduct of the Coolidge presidency and the surging stock market was the purchasing power of buying on margin. Americans would use margin to purchase large amounts of stocks. Margin would allow the average stock trader to purchase more stocks than normal because they would only pay a fraction of the cost of the stock up front, allowing them to purchase more. Once the price of the stock rose significantly, the stockholder would sell that stock, repay the remainder of the value owed on the original purchase, and pocket the leftovers. Buying on margin was very risky for the buyer and business because all of the funds were not collected up front, leading to a possibility of a very large loss. In this case, the stockholder would be responsible for the whole price of the stock and be in debt to the stock market. This was never a good thing. So who benefited and who didn't benefit from the Roaring Twenties? Not every American benefited from the surging economy, and the list of Americans who did not benefit from the greatest surge of mass consumption in American history is a lot longer than the people who did benefit from it. I'm going to discuss four groups and how they were negatively affected during the Roaring Twenties. Laborers were negatively affected because during the recession and the return of laissez-faire capitalism, business leaders were put back in charge of the laborers, leading to many labor disputes. Many strikes were broken up by the government, leading to the defeat of many labor union disputes, and as an effect, union memberships decreased and wages were not able to keep up with inflation. A second group of Americans who suffered during the 1920s were farmers. The new inventions of machinery allowed farmers to harvest their crops faster than they ever did before, allowing them to harvest a lot more. Unfortunately, this led to an overproduction of crops, and with a supply that was too high and a demand that was too low, farmers caused an inflation on their products which led to the loss of the farmer's income. A third group of uh, Americans that did not bode well during the Roaring Twenties were the Native Americans. Natives still have not won many court cases leading to the rights and progression of Natives in America. The majority were still living on reservations, which were land set aside by the government, and success was rare. Most reservations were without any running water or heat, which led to natives having the shortest lifespan of any American, as well as they had the highest unemployment rate of the decade. The final group of Americans who suffered during the 20s were the African Americans. It was supposed to be a great time of cultural celebration. The emancipation of those held in bondage was sure to lead to success and equality of African Americans across the nation. However, this was not the case. White supremacy had risen during the decade, leading to many black Americans to leave the South, their families, and their cultural roots. This was called the Great Migration. The Great Migration was a time before World War I where millions of African Americans left the South to escape Jim Crow segregation and discrimination and moved to the North to take factory jobs that were left behind by white men heading off to war. Factory managers were looking for a new source of cheap labor and found it with the millions of black men. This led to a slightly higher standard of living for black Americans. Newly arrived African Americans in the North would be forced, arguably by the government, to live in slums and run down parts of the city like Harlem, New York. Many musicians and authors would tell stories about the history of African Americans as well as create new legacies. This would all end, however, when after the war millions of white men came back from Europe and wanted their jobs back. During the 1920, African Americans experienced high unemployment and were paid drastically less than their white counterparts. So who benefited by the thriving economy of 1920? It seemed to be the white population of the North who traded stock and owned business. So this growing economy. In the 1920s, it was a decade of increasing conveniences for the middle class. Mass production or the production of an abundance of products made life easier for the American people, which also helped boost the economy. The Roaring Twenties led to a growth of industries and a period of mass consumption.
Mass consumption is when the average level of consumption is very high and people consume large amounts of goods. The booming economy created a higher purchasing power which led to a society of mass consumption. What fueled this craze of mass consumption? Advertising. Advertising which was telling Americans what they needed and why. New ways of advertising it was in the theaters and on radios, and it spread the word of consumer goods across the nation. Advertisers would capitalize on people's hopes, dreams, and fears to sell more products. Advertising was not a new concept. However, ad agency would use more aggressive advertising campaigns for their goods. America would hear, sing, would hear such things like, if the Reds used one type of dish soap, don't buy that one. Buy American. Or 9 out of 10 doctors agree you should give your baby soda in the bottle. Advertisers no longer were required to wait for the demand of a product. They would now create the demand. They would use famous actors or sports personalities to go on the radio and pitch their product to the masses, causing the demand to skyrocket. So what types of goods would actors advertise for? For the most part, it was things that made life easier for Americans. During the 1920s, Americans saw an increase in leisure time due to the inventions of electronic devices. Electricity was becoming more widespread in the United States and more homes were taking advantage of the new conveniences. Gone were the days of taking carpets outside to beat the dirt from them, or washing clothes on a washboard and hanging them outside or even changing the ice block in the ice box. Women would usually spend the whole day doing cho household chores inside and out. In the 1920s, consumers purchased large amounts of vacuum cleaners, washing machines, and refrigerators to save hours and hours of work and make lives easier. New electric stoves and irons were purchased as well, all to make life easier, and women didn't need to make their families clothes anymore. Now they could buy it off the shelf at stores. Americans now had much more time to do with what they please. Many Americans purchased radios and listened to advertisements and sporting events, but during the 1920s, it was the radio that brought the daily news to the masses. Boy, oh boy, what a time to be alive. All right, guys, that's the third segment. Now we're going to go on to the fourth segment of the Roaring Twenties, and that's going to be the standard of living. I'll see you next time.